Okay guys, so last little bit here of 14.2. We're just taking a look at a different presentation of one of your voltaic cells for questions three and four. Uh, as we take a look at this one, you can see that you have cell notation. Now, if you're absolutely stuck, you do have a list of all of the entities, and so you could write out the entities method, and you could go through all of those parts, figure out what is SOA and SRA, and still get to the answers the same way that we did up here in question number two. But because we have the two half cells shown, there is enough information here to figure out which one is going to be OA, which one, or pardon me, which one is going to be reduction, and which one is going to be your oxidation. So here we have them. All right, we can see platinum. Remember, that's one of your inert electrodes. Why do we need it? You don't have a solid phase here for this half cell. But take a look at what's happening as you read it. Hydrogen is turning into H+. If neutral hydrogen turns into H plus ions, is it gaining or losing electrons? To me, that looks like a loss. Remember that the loss of electrons is always oxidation, and so for, in this case, this must be oxidation, and therefore, the anode. We can confirm that with this other side. You can see the phase change here. We do not need an inert electrode because we do have a solid phase. And as we read this left to right, your silver ions are uh, turning into solid silver. Remember that metal ions and ores always reduce to pure metals. A plus turning into a zero. If you go back to your oxidation numbers, all right, is something that is becoming more negative. And so this must be reduction and therefore your cathode. So you have at your uh, access here both formulas and we can figure out the net cell potential. All right, remember that if we take a look at your reduction and find its potential, we just add it to the oxidation potential and then we can come up with our total. So what is reduced? Silver is reduced, find silver, there it is. Silver reduces to, where are we here? 0 0.80, or its reduction potential is positive 0 0.80. And so we write that one is as is. Reduction always stays the same because of your table. We're now just looking for the oxidation of hydrogen. Well, there's hydrogen, your half cell reference. So reduction, it is zero. Well, if I write it backwards, hmm, still zero. So that's just 0, 0.00. Add them together, and the total cell potential here is 0 0.80 volts, and it is spontaneous because of that positive voltage. So given the, uh, the cell notation here allows us a way to kind of shortcut all of that written work. It's also a good way of testing your understanding in what we are writing here with cell notation and making sure that we can still interpret that same info. All right, if we do get stuck, you do have the entities uh, that you can fall back on. But let's take a look at our shortcut method here again, since we have the cell notation. Maybe this tells us enough. So here you can see that you have lead in a solid form turning into lead 2 plus. Did I gain or lose? I become more positive, so that must be a loss of electrons. This should be oxidation, and therefore, this should be the anode half cell. This one's a little bit harder to see. All right, you have dichromate, hydrogen, and chromium. You've got a lot of things playing together here, but you've already identified oxidation. I'm just going to quickly take a peek at my data table here, and there's acidified dichromate turning into chromium 3 plus. Again, you have no solid phases throughout this, so that's why you need the copper electrode. So we've identified that you do have a reduction taking place here, and it is also the cathode. Now I fully admit that one was a lot harder to see. You could always default to the entities method. Just, you know, list everything you have here, go through all of your OAs and RAs, find the strongest OA, find the strongest RA, and from there you can still come up with 
the reactions, and your reduction and oxidation uh, information. But we had enough information to get there just from the cell notation and identifying the two half cells, the cathode and anode halves, or reduction and the oxidation half. So we know that if we take the reduction potential for our cathode, and we find that one, looking on our little chart here, there it is, go all the way across, it is positive 1.23. Reduction is always listed as is. We then have to list our oxidation potential if we're going to continue in this additive method. All right, that one is for lead. So we find lead, and it is negative 0.13. Now that is a reduction potential, so I will flip this because I'm trying to write oxidation. So it's positive 0.13 volts. Add them together for your net cell potential and you get 1.36 volts positive, and there's your spontaneous reaction again. This is another good battery or cell. So far, so good. All right, one more to take a look at here. This is a little bit of a, kind of a play on it a little bit, kind of a solve for X problem. Here you have a zinc palladium cell, and you're given the net cell potential, Palladium is not on your data table, so they're asking you to figure out its reduction potential. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. I'll even go back and take you guys through all of the entities. Actually, that uh, probably wouldn't help you out too much here. So we have zinc 2 plus. And, oops, zinc. And then we had palladium 2 plus, and then solid palladium. And we were trying to figure out the net cell potential here. So you can see zinc has lost electrons. So there is our oxidation, and therefore our anode. Palladium 2 plus has become neutral. It's gained electrons. So there's your reduction, and therefore your cathode. So if we go to our little table here, we look for the reduction potential. Again, and this one is the unknown. We do not know that one. It's what we're trying to solve for. We do have the oxidation. Okay, zinc is on our data table. If you look up zinc, its reduction potential is negative 0.76. So its oxidation potential will be positive 0.76. Now remember, in this question, we did give you the total cell potential. It is positive 1.75 volts. So what plus 0.76 equals 0.75? If you don't like it in that format, we can just, of course, move it over here a little bit. 1.75 volts is equal to 0 0.76 volts plus x. Subtract your 0.76 from both sides, and x is equal to positive 0 0.99 volts. Therefore, the reduction potential of palladium is 0.99 volts. I hope those three examples made some sense for you. All right, this does confuse from time to time, and most of it kind of uh, results in, do I know what reduction and oxidation are? Do I know what cathode and anode are? Do I know when to add and when to subtract? So again, I, I like to pick just one type and go from there. If you like to have another barrel or bullet in the chamber there and can keep both formulas uh, straight, great, go for it. Um, I hope it works out well for you. Try your practice problems. Uh, number 11, on page 631. There's a few more here on page 633. It's kind of more summative section there of chapter 14.2. You should also try your lab journal assignment 14a and a key will be coming for that one in the next couple of days. Okay, so there's your homework assignment 14.2. That puts kind of everything to bed for that particular part of the unit. Oh, no it doesn't. I lied. I have one more small section to get through uh, just on 
changing where zero is in our reduction table. Remember, we did pick it arbitrarily, so we do want to take a look at one other thing. So I will come back to reduction potential uh, in the next section.